And welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live. You are watching Mondo Market TV. This is the Sparkle of Creativity show with Shahar Boyaya. And today we have a fantastic show because you're going to see how you can just take yarn, just yarn, basic yarn, and turn them into beautiful feathers. It's amazing. You're going to love it. But before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, and share where you're watching, wherever it is that you're watching so that we know that we're not alone. This is our little friendly hangout, right? This is a time for yourself. So we get together as friends to talk about crafts and things like that and really have a good time. Uh, so we really do leave a comment because we love it when you do and it just gets the conversation going. Also, before we continue on with the show, I do want to let you know about a very cool giveaway mm -hmm. that we have right now going on at Mondo Market TV. So all you have to do to participate, and when you do, you were, you're going to get this very cool micro fleur, microwave um, flower, press. flower press, very neat, very cool device. Uh, in fact, we featured it in a previous episode of Sparkle of Creativity. But for you to get one of these, uh, go to Mondo Market TV on Facebook, find the post where we're talking about the giveaway, on there you can see what you need to do. But basically you need to like, comment, and share that post and uh, you'll be entered to win. And a lucky person will be announced on the 15th of July. So uh, take advantage of that because this is an awesome device and um, I'm sure you'll have tons of things to do with it and it's so much fun. Yeah, it's the kind of little thing that you want to have. Yes. And then every now and then you find a different use for a, a dried flower. And this is the most uh, amazing time of the year for you to do that. It's right? just perfect. It's just perfect. Now, in theme with what we're going to cover today, I want to know, so leave a comment, I want to know what is your favorite bird? Yes. And by the way, you can watch it on mondomarkettv.com. That is the best viewing experience for you. Uh, on there, you will see the video where you're watching and a chat box where you can participate. But if you're watching on Facebook as well, uh, do that. Leave a comment right there and I am monitoring Facebook and YouTube. So wherever you feel most, most comfortable with, uh, watch there and interact there. Mm -hmm. So in fact, Shahar, while you introduce them, I am going to share. Yeah. Yeah. Do it, share, All right. share, share, share. And what? Tell I just, just want to welcome, we've got Sandy and Jen watching Ooh, right now. Welcome, yay. ladies. Okay. Okay, that's it? Oh, that's I thought it. You, you were going to say something. Well, I have to read. I haven't read it yet. Okay, so <laughs> wait there. We will I'm going to share first and then I'll read. Okay. How about that? By the way, birds are my thing. I'm an official birder. Right, I belong to groups, associations, and I go out a lot to see birds, you too, right? Yes. And we actually like to go with a photo camera and take pictures of them, but they are amazing creatures. I prefer raptors, and I think, well, I cannot say the bird I want to say because she's going to say I got her bird. Because she did. Like, uh, it, slowly it she wants same. to like, transform into me, and I no. have to ask her. <laughs> <laughs> so I came first. Pick a different I came bird. First. Yes, but I, okay. I stated so, that that is my bird so first. So, in lieu of the fact that she has her favorite bird, then it cannot be shared by anybody else. Well, it cannot be even shared by it her. Is my favorite it bird. can be shared by you. The pygmy owl is the second really, one. Really, I did not expect you to say that. Oh, that thing is cute. cute I thought cute, you were going to say cute. the eagle or something. I like them all. I, I like raptors. That's the thing. I like raptors a lot. I think they're fantastic. Okay. So then, okay. All right. <laughs> well, it's working. Now, talking about birds, because what do they all have in common? Or at least 99% of them have that. Feathers, right? Feathers, they're fun. And you can make a lot of things using natural feathers. But what got me thinking into doing this uh, tutorial today, this demo today, was actually that as you, I have a, st a studio in my home, right? Some people's studio is part of the kitchen table. Uh, like that happened with uh, Kathy Hacking. She's an amazing instructor at Curious Mondo. She teaches wire wrapping and she has a ton of kids and stuff. So she uses half a table in her kitchen that is the, her studio and it's her special place. And other people have, I've been to some studios that are unbelievable, the size of it. I actually have a friend that she has a ranch with four houses, one is the main house, the other three are actually her studio. Each one with, uh, it's suitable for some type of different techniques. It's unbelievable. Mine is not like that. Mine is a room, a small room. But the one thing that happens is you, you, you make stuff 
and you do have leftovers, and of course you're not going to throw that away, first of all, because you don't want to you know, fill more than landfill, but second, because you know at some point you may use that. What happens, I don't know if that happens to you, but it happens to me, over time is that you end up with a lot of everything, right? And it gets in the way, it's hard, especially if you are in a small environment, it's hard to keep everything organized. I don't know how many times I enter my studio and I thought, Oh, if I only had somebody that could think how to really organize this, because I try, and every single time after I finish something, there's too much of everything around the place. But one thing that, because I like fiber a lot, one thing that is always around is a lot of fiber, yarns, threads, and textiles too, right? It's, it's a lot. And even though I always think I'm going to end up using it at some point, um, a lot of those things have been there for years, right? So I've been thinking lately, how can I repurpose things and give them a new life without having to throw things away? And that's when the yarn feather came about. Because uh, first of all, you can use whatever you have as leftovers there, even in whatever quantity you have. Because you can make tiny feathers, you can make huge feathers. So you can work in this demo with floss for embroidery, you can work with crochet thread, you can work with yarn, and you can even work with jute and other types of, of uh, things that you could make the feather. You're going to see the process, you're going to get it. So there are many, many possibilities for you to use leftovers. But what would you use feathers for? Well, I, I, can, I can I say the obvious uh, that we're gonna talk, tackle today? <laughs> yeah. Uh, jewelry, maybe? Yes. So, for example, this one I, I made last night. Yes. Right? And I, I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty, too. It, it's a bigger piece. I know not everybody likes to, to wear the bigger The one I'm pieces. wearing, also. That which I wore, I think, about the beginning of this week. I actually used yes. that one. It's also, so that one is made out of embroidery floss. And I used three, three colors and something else that I'm going to talk about. And this one is uh, crochet thread, which I use two colors. The, the example we are going to be doing today, we are going to use three. So you get a very good idea. All right. Before Go. we get started, by the way, uh, Linda said, Mondo Market rocks. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kim Sorensen is watching us. Welcome, Kim. Good feathers and flowers go really well together, Kim. Beverly <laughs> said, Bev is there, she said, hello, ladies. Hey, mm, Paver I hope you're feeling better. She's like, hmm, Paver Paul them for my birds. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. All right. Well, and by the way, for those of you who just joined us, don't forget, share. We want to know who, what is your favorite, favorite bird? bird? Yes, we haven't heard yet about that. So, well, there are many things that you can use feathers for when you're, when you're making stuff and crafting. So I have a, a very few examples to show you here because in my mind, I always, I think I'm going to have enough time to do everything I, I have here and then the week gets in the way and you don't. But you will get the idea of some possibilities. So a basic one, would be for you to, to use yarn feathers in, in cards. Ooh. So here, really, I just stamped a card and put the, the feather there, but you could make this look really, really, really cool, yes. right? The third Oops. dimensional uh. factor of the, the card makes a whole difference when the person gets it. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, there is this thing in, in marketing, and you're not doing marketing when you're sending a card, but anything that has volume on an envelope will get open. That, that is statistically proven because it caught so much attention when people get an envelope and they feel something in there. They have to open, right? So when you need somebody really to read your message, it's a great way to go with cards. Don't forget that today, because we live in this virtual world where we know any, everybody, but we really don't know anybody there, uh, anything that you do personalized that talks to somebody like, I care, it has a huge impact for them. So it's a good practice every now and then to send a card out there. This is another one I made, and I, I, I started making this um, this card here. Where should I show this? Well, for now, let's just hold it up over here. Well, uh, one idea. This one is also crochet thread. And of course, I have to cut this. This is not finished, but it gives you an idea. I could add, and again, 
I could tell a different story with this. But what else? What else? What else? Well, so, jury, we already talked about that, right? Look at it. I'm going to put it. I'm going to sneak up over here on you. Okay. So I'm going to put this over here just for them to see. Okay. And then you're saying you can put the feather right there. You could there. put the feather there. Okay. And again, you can make a better. I'm not a card maker. This is just so to I use my limited skills you. for that one. Just to give uh, you the idea. Well, then of course the jury and small things that you can put in a mobile that you have, for example, in a kid's room. But one thing that I really enjoy. So I have a few more that I made with crochet thread. But the one that it really caught my attention uh, was to make big, big uh, leaves. For, for example, what I planned, I, I, I had planned to have three today. You got one, because that's what I had time at the end. But think about this. This is a big one. And I have a, a wreath that I like also to roll with yarn. I, I actually have made seven or eight different ones. So I roll with yarn. I make some felt flowers. Sometimes I even put a felt creature. I have one, for example, that I adore that has some felt flowers and a lamb on that. And then I can add the feathers in there. So I have this color that I like, and I have a bright blue that they go really well together. So my intention was exactly to play with those two and add to a wreath to put on my door, especially now during, uh, it doesn't have to be for Christmas. We can put wreaths during spring and everything else. What I like about this is that, well, first I'm using leftovers that I have. Second, it's quite malleable. I don't know if you guys can see. I can change the pose of the feather to allow me to tell whatever story I want to tell at that moment in whatever piece I'm making, mm. right? That, that is cool. But of course, it's also a little bit wet, weather resistant. It's not something that I can leave in my garden, but if I leave on my door, like my door gets a lot of sun, right? Then it, it will withstand, for uh, the other side, please. Uh, it would withstand the weather. So that here it is that it's in its normal Just setting. Just worsted weight yarn. But you can, like you're saying, you can uh, adjust it and yes, make it take the form and mm -hmm. the shape that you would like. Put my more dimension or not. What would you use this particular feather for? So that's for the wreath that ah, I want to put for spring. Ah, very nice. Or now we're actually summer, also right? For I'm summer, a little behind. This works great as a. <laughs> but you could again. Uh, if you go online and you look, you can use feathers in so many different things. So. Check it out. Okay. Check it out. So uh, Marie Lewis, she said her favorite bird is a chicken. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> uh, They're cute. That's for sure. Maria said flamingos. Mm. Mm. And I'm sure you can do easily flamingo feathers. Yeah. 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 No biggie. Uh, Linda said the African gray parrot is her favorite. Mm. Debbie said she's looking forward to this. You're gonna like it, Debbie. It's very easy to make. Uh, Kim said that her favorite bird is Big Bird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but no, really, it's the blue and gold macaw. Macaw. You know the gray one that uh, our friend just mentioned? Uh huh. Actually, uh, the African gray, gray parrot? Yes. Melissa Terlizzi is an instructor that is coming to Curious Mondo to teach a class on turtles. But if you look at her page on Facebook, she has one that she made as a wall piece with the gray parrot. It's very cool. You should look into that. And uh, let's see, also, uh, Debbie, she said, sorry, but I love peacock feathers. Here's a challenge for you, Shahar, to make peacock feathers. Uh-huh. Yes. Well, you could work the colors. The circle would be a little challenging with this method, but I'm sure if we sit down, we can think about something. Okay. And Jen, Jen said her favorite birds, uh, hummingbirds. Hummingbirds, yeah. So here's, Jen, I have a story for you. We have, so we have our, our house, we have our door. Ah, oh, this is cool. And there is a tree that, you know, the branches, they just come and they touch the wall. And we have a hummingbird nest there. That yes. is really this tiny. It's like itty bitty and she comes every year. It's the so third year that we've noticed. I think noticed. it's the third year that we have noticed that she comes. And, and it's whatever, whatever is the period, I never study hummingbirds, but it's fast. It's super fast. She's there a month and gone in the next, something like that. I still haven't been able to see the babies and I hear they're like... It's a bit, and we don't like want to bees? disturb, so we never really tried. We did take some pictures of her in the nest on the first year. Yes. But you know, from below. It's super cool. But, oh, it's so cool to see that. So happen. my favorite bird is the kestrel, just in case you kestrel, were wondering. Kestrel, yes, which is the the American fal falcon. Yes. Right. So he's super cute. Okay. All so right. That's so the how baker. do we do this? So simple. 
really takes five minutes or a little bit more. So one thing you need is for a wire. <laughs> wait, wait. Right. Marie said, Marie is the one who said chicken who likes chickens. <laughs> she said, my favorite bird makes me breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a dog called Mr. Goji Berry. So it's a mork. He is a mix of a Yorkie and a Maltese. And he is totally crazy for chicken. But the <laughs> one that is already cooked. <laughs> He's totally crazy for that. So, so that when I got that, uh, we actually drove seven hours to, to get that dog. And the lady that gave me the dog, he came with a bag of cooked chicken because she <laughs> said he's crazy for that. And he was and about four or five months. And she was not kidding when she said no, that. No, he goes insane when there's chicken in the he's house. He's obsessed. Yeah. By the way, Debbie said, I'm beyond jealous that you have a hummingbird nest. Yes. They're Tic Tac sized eggs. Yes. I, you know, we never wanted to go put a, a ladder. No, I've always wanted to do it. Yeah, we just but we decided because, it's you know. It's okay. It's okay. Someday we will see the eggs in another nest. So you need the wire, Florida wire. It really doesn't matter much uh, which gauge you're using. This one, if I'm not wrong, is about 20. I had a home. I'm using things that I already had. Uh, what I want in the wire is that it's kind of flexible. So if you work with uh, you know, a very thick wire, it just gets tougher for you to work with. But this is easy. Now, if you have a choice at home uh, from floral wire like this, that is just the bare wire, or the one that, is, that already has the paper around it, which is quite common, that one is a little bit easier because the yarn is not going to walk around when you're working. Okay, but either one will work. And what else you need? Well, you need some either yarn or floss. Uh, what you do have to think is the two things. Uh, first, the the it, it takes more work to to work with the the floss or even the crochet thread because of course you know, skinny is tiny. Uh, it sweets better for small feathers. And the yarn, you can go big, but the yarn will take a lot more product as well, right? Because it soaks more. But you can see that you can make amazing things with the big ones as well. And uh, I am going to be using the power ball here, the transparent one, because besides gluing everything together, uh, it also makes it a little more resistant. And, and, and you can see that I can bend, but everything stays in place because it's hardened. That doesn't mean that you could not use uh, another type or uh, not another type of product like Power Pro, but you could use a white glue. You could, you, it would not be any weather resistant at all. So and right now, it doesn't uh, stay the shape as it does with this one, but you can. This is the one that we're using right now. You yes. can see it right here. It's the Power Pro Transparent uh, in this very handy dandy tube that you can just like, it's and very great. Yeah. Yes. And that's the one uh, we are offering today at a discount price, right? Yes, it is. Do you want me to talk about that first or no? Yeah, that's okay. I can get ready here. All right, so while she gets ready, while she gets ready, I'd like to invite you to go to mondomarkettv.com and you can see on there, we have the transparent paper pulse for you. Uh, it's a handy dandy bottle, perfect for you to just like hold and shh use it just like we uh, mentioned earlier. But Mondo Market TV is where you want to go because during the next 24 hours, we have it on a special uh, pricing for you. So normally it's $17.99. Today you can get this bottle for $16.57. $16 All you have to do is go to Mondo Market TV to get yours, but do it during the next 24 hours because this promo only lasts for 24 hours. So the first thing you need to think about is how big is going to be your feather. Right, how big you want the feather to be. We are going to go with a small size because, again, the, the crochet thread is not very thick. And I always cut more than what I need to be able to hold and make decisions later as well. And one side, so what's going to be the top, I'm going to turn around the wire so it doesn't fall off. Okay, super simple. Then I need the, the yarn I'm going to be using. So I'm, I think this is size 10, if I'm not wrong. And you get the colors that you want. Like I said, I'm going to cut enough for three colors so we can have a little difference in that. Yeah, see, it's super easy. And then with my hands, I just roll them around and I, I usually count 20 times or 30 times. It depends on the size of the of the feather, and here I'm not counting because I'm talking and I cannot do both things at the same time. 
It's just a characteristic of my personality. So I have some here. Let's go a little more because I really like that color. I cut and then I cut in the middle. Be careful not to cut your fingers. So I have the threads that I want. And I already cut the other two colors just for the sake of time, okay? And I didn't count either. I row and cut because I can decide that later. Now, for you to be working, the best thing to do is to have a piece of saran wrap. Remember that power pole does not stick to plastic, so here makes it really easy and you don't mess around. You could work here on a silicone surface because that would also not uh, stick, so, so that would be fine. The saran wrap is, makes it convenient also for you to move. Personally, mm -hmm. when I was doing this, I enjoyed the flat surface more. More than this. But huh? this makes it easier for you to maneuver and it. And move them around. If you're making a ton, like if you want a mobile in a child's room and you want yes. several, it would make it easier. Well, so just because it may have a lot of shine here, I'm going to leave this on the side it, for it a second. It works fine, Jahar, just so you okay, know. Okay, but I can come back later. And so I'm going to work from the bottom of my feather to the top, from the bottom to the top. That's how I decided. Doesn't mean you cannot do the opposite. And I get, especially with this uh, kin uh, teeny skinny type of thread, I get three every time, okay? I go, oh, oh, oh sorry, I totally forgot what? one thing. What did oh you forget? Oh my gosh, I oh, forgot. Oh. oh, oh, panic, panic. Drama, drama. Drama, drama. Okay, no, I forgot one thing. So. Forget, you, you cut this, okay? Now rewind. Okay, now what you do is we are going to cover the stem. Why? Because you don't want the, and I don't know if the, the feather thing is called stem, but we don't want this to be bare wire, right? So what you do is, and in this case, really any, any glue, it's already drying, so hot in here. Would you like you, me you to do that for you? Yes, it's just a tiny bit just to hold the thread, okay? Just a tiny bit. And then, you, and I actually, I do this with my finger every time, but you don't have to. You just need really to secure the first one that didn't, but then you go. And then you just go doing this until the top. And you can let this show. That's why you need to work with a color that doesn't fight with the other colors that you chose. Because if you choose to, you can let this show and this is going to be so tiny, it's going to be different to show anyway, but in a big one you might, because remember, we have feathers that they have a very cool design. We have others that are kind of open, like on the necklace that I made for Nash, I did on purpose left some gaps between them, like it was more of a distress type of feather. Plus, I mean, you know, it, when, it it, when you is it really exactly perfect? Not Never, yes. right? Give me this, like Beverly says, if you put it, you use it, if you touch it, you use it. Okay, so I'm just securing the other end, okay? Let's show it on the close-up over okay, here. Okay, do show up on the close-up. So this is what she did. Okay, super simple and fast. Okay, okay on the bigger one, you're, you're working probably with yarn, it's going to, to work even faster. Okay, so now we go back to the, strand, to the strands that I have. And this is what I'm going to do. So I like this strong collar. I'm a strong collar kind of person. So I like strong collars. You can choose however you want. And I'm going to use this and this one. This is exactly what I did on the one I am wearing right now. And it, I, it did turn out okay. But on the second one, I decided let's put a darker collar every now and then just to bring, to pop a little bit more. So I chose this color here, kind of a rust color. I like those colors. Okay, so the way I'm going to work from the bottom to the top, I want the stronger color to be at the bottom. So I get three strands, like I told you. By the way, we had a suggestion from Sandy that would be cool with variegated yarns. Oh, whoa, totally. yeah, this one? is made of variegated, and the one I'm going to put the product is actually variegated. Uh, this is thread, but yes, it would, totally. Okay, what I'm doing now, so I put the, the three, thre uh, I'm having trouble with vocabulary. I don't know is why. Is this three strands, or I don't know. So anyway, I put it below my wire, and then I start to make a notch, just once, just once, and do like this. Okay, and leave. It's easier if the whole time you leave 
three strands to one side and three stra strands to the other. It's going to make your life easier. And then you go for as long as you think it's necessary with the same color. I'm going to put another one on the so bottom. So you do the knot and you go three strands to one side, three strands to the to other. The other. Just to make things easier. And that easier. will make your life easier, FYI. I yes. know that the hard way. She, you tried yesterday, right? I yes. said, oh, I'm late. I need help. And I was like, fine. I'll fine, help I'll you. help you. And then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did not go three to one side, three to the other. So it took us half an hour to fix that problem. So you want to go that way. Okay. So I'm putting another one at the bottom because okay. I think it's necessary. I'm going to put one more of this three. A lot of it is just the balance of how it looks, right, Shahar? Like you, as you're putting it, you see if it needs more, if it needs less. Just it doesn't look balanced. Yeah, the, it has to somewhat look balanced on the sides. They don't have to sides. be one color, right? It's going to be, it all depends on what you're doing. If it's a, a necklace, you might want to put more details so it pops more. If it's a wreath, for example, and you're going to be using several, you might just want to make a bunch one color, a bunch another color, and go from there. Okay, and then I'm going to add three strands of the darker one just to create some interest. And I want to know what you think, because like I said, this is fast. It's a very fast type of thing to do. Welcome, Trish. I know you're watching. Let us know what your favorite bird is. Yeah. Trish Roberts? Yes. Okay. There you go. I put this one. We'll create some interest. I can add more of the darker one and then come with the light one. So you see that what you're doing is just adding these strands with one knot. It's almost every like time. a gradient there that you're doing. Yeah. And, and you go from there. I'm not going to do this one all the time for the sake of time, but I think you got it, right? You want to come up to... So how many more or less do you do? Oh, so it, it, this is a good question because, not that I know how many I do, but the more you add, the more uh, bulk you're going to have in that piece. And when you cut, it, it looks lo more like a feather. So for example, this one, it's thread. When I look with the one with yarn, yarn is thick, you see, and it covers the space very, very well. So I'm not working with a ton. But here, it kind of could use more in the dark one. Yeah. See, it, it could you use more. If I want a distress feather, like you know those that we find on the floor all the time, that's OK. But if I want something that looks more uh, full. Then the thicker one. <laughs> then the thicker one. I still can work here with the, the form in itself that I want, but it could use more. And so it's because we, uh, with the thread and the floss, you, are, you don't have a lot of volume there to work with. So the more you use, the better. Now, do I count? I, no, I don't. I really look and see, okay, I think I need more. With this one, for example, I think I need more of the strong color. Then I will start adding the light uh, the light yellow right at the end here. So I have the different. Can you see the difference at all on camera of this one? Let me take it out. Not really. Let me take it out. I so actually didn't even see. notice the difference until you pointed it out. Okay. Um, see, this is the one that you're working on right now that you were showing the. Yes. So I need to add more. So if you put this one here, that I did, where do I put this? Here? Right here, Shahar. Right here. So this side only. Uh, you are going to see that I have a lot of the dark yellow, and then I added the other mm -hmm. one. What I'm trying to do different is adding a little bit of the rust color just to make it more design. Gives it a little bit of depth. Yeah, that's it. Shading almost. Uh-huh. Yeah, yes. you could go, I mean, we are doing so something here you fast. added quite a few here. Yes, but I don't know how many. I, I just okay. added until I thought it was satisfying. So this okay? right here definitely needs more. Yes. No doubt yes, about it. Yes, it does. Uh, a, a, a question from Jan. If I was using embroidery floss, would you use all six strands or separate it I out? I use the six strands, yes. That's what happened with this one. You'll have a fuller yes. effect, and I think it looks better. You, would, you, you know what I noticed, and that's why you're seeing one with floss uh, and the others with, with thread and yarn. And I wanted to have more with yarn, believe me. Uh, it's because it takes double the time. Anyway, with what? Well, because the flo well, what I think about this is this: floss is unbelievable. How many colors we have? Yes. So you can go colors. really, really crazy. I love that, but it, it does take more work, mm. and because it's so 
thin even with the six strands. So it, it, you just need to be prepared to work for longer. I was trying to make several fast, so, so it, I made only one with floss, but I love the possibilities with color. Bonnie said, oh, Trish said, hello, beautiful people. And hey. eagles are her favorite. Uh, I love eagles. Uh, Bonnie said, I love the dark one the way that it is. Uh-huh. And uh, Bonnie also said, let's see, um, I love how yours turned out with the two colors, the one you just showed us. Yes, I, I like that one. And Beth really said, mm, my brain is buzzing. <laughs> and uh, Jenny said, you guys are so creative and awesome. So check it out. Uh, this is the one that I'm wearing right now, just yeah. so you have a close-up shot of it. Uh, this one you played with the colors quite a bit, right? I think I have there. And you gave it that distressed feel to it? Yes. I have black and I have two or three different shades of gray. That, that's the cool part about floss. Even if you have a bunch of leftovers, they're different colors, mm -hmm. right? So, yes. And then I did one trick. I can show this before I teach you the rest. Okay. Okay. So I have this pan here. Oh. And we have a Mondo Market. And it's... We are going to do a show just on this pan because it is really unbelievable. But it's an oil-based uh, pan, see. which means that whatever I add that is going to stay. So, for example, the other day, we, we mix glasses at home all the time we are, when we drink water or whatever. I was thinking, I'm going to write my name with that pan there. Because that's stays. my glass, my favorite glass. Right? So you can really use this in any type of material. So what I did with this one, I used the black the, and two different shades of gray. That's of how gray. you got the shiny. Yes. I and was then I came that. here. Let me do right on top so I don't mess up my piece. And I just did this. Oh. That's all. Now think one thing. What? It's not going to work with this color. If I wanted to make designs, this one will work. Let's say I want to make more intricate designs. I want to create little Vs, for example. I can come here and V and V and create a pattern. Of course, right now I'm doing this, you're still not seeing. Let but me, I can wait. Can I do it? Can you you do always it? try to touch oh, my stuff. Yeah, this, I like this come close up on. camera. Yeah, you love. Uh, Bonnie said, oh my goodness, this is going to be a have to try it. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So, see, I can make a V a little bit lower, or you could, if it was black, for example, and I was using, I, I were using this, it would be unbelievable, right? Look at this. And the great thing about this pen is that it really takes very little effort for you to get the ink out of it. Yeah. And you can so get Debbie, the So Debbie, of course, we, we do not have other colors other than, than the, the gold and the silver. But if I'm going back to your peacock feather, I can make a feather and then I can at least create that design that is uh, unique for the peacock with this pen. And I would have a rounded figure on my feather, which could be awesome. Oh, you see, uh, Debbie, uh, give us another challenge. That was too easy. <laughs> okay, so now I do have the saran wrap below. And I have my, my feather that doesn't look like a feather. One thing you can do, see how uneven uh, it is where it ends one and where it ends the yes. other. It's normal because you're tying, so of course it's going to do. One thing you can do is give a little, like, like your hairdresser, Okay. give a, just a little cut here to even them. It, it's going to get easier later, okay? But you don't need them poking in two. See, this one is really longer than the others. So just, ow, oh, I almost pinched myself. Okay, okay, so do this. And then you lay on the, the plastic. Jenny said the metallic is fantastic. And Lee, yeah. she said it's 5.30 a.m. in Singapore. Ooh. I was glad that I have logged into Facebook to awesome. catch this craft live. Welcome, Lee. Yeah, this pen is unbelievable. I, I, I'm trying to find the time to do a show just on that pen. It goes on so many materials. I do use a, a, a comb here just to make sure I have my threads kind of on a straight line and not to uneven all the threads on this side or on this side, okay? So it doesn't have to be matte, but it has to be, my power pro is already drying. So then you get, this is not my, <laughs> the, this is I not my thing. A pencil with an eraser. Get a, a, a brush of any type, okay, and start passing this on your piece, okay? And you can do this with your fingers as well. I, I actually like a lot to work with my fingers because I, I make it, make sure it's on every side. But the first thing you need to do is do this step here, because if you start 
putting this just with your fingers, it will happen the same thing that happened to Nashua last night. Uh, it's going to become a mess. The problem is the moment you start with your finger, the little threads are going to all mix together. Yes. And then you're going to have a kind of pretty hard time just separating it with the comb. If it happens, what we did is we put it right on the table like she has it there. And then with then the comb, after the I had the pepper pole on it, just like combed it, combed it, combed it, combed it, combed and it. And I will show you how we did because, you, you know, even when everything is right, you may want to spread And I'll them. show you the little trick. So don't forget that we only tied this once. Remember, it's really not a knot. So don't forget to add here as well, okay? So it looks ugly because it's white right now, but don't forget that once it dries, it's transparent. Well, now I kind of have the piece separate with something on it. You carefully will pull, pull this and turn. And because we have that first coat of power pole there, we're good. See, I, it didn't mess up my feather. I told you it's easy. And now you do it again on the other side to make sure that you have the product on all of the fibers. Yeah, and you may even come and massage, depending on what you're doing this for. Uh, you might even want to come and massage each strand with your fingers to make sure everything is covered. So, now, remember at the beginning, mm. I said uh, you can put this on your door, so if you get some rain or some sun, it's okay, mm -hmm. but it's not something that you will put in the garden and it will last, it's not. It's going to fade away if you do. Do you wanna show your trick? Yes. So see, I have my feather more or less, okay. but I have some overlapping. How would you fix this? Well, so then I got a skewer, just a basic skewer. You can see it here, no biggie, uh, just a regular skewer. <laughs> uh, I got with the, the little tip right there, I used it to separate it. So we'll see it in action over here. Um, and I basically just, well, I, the whole time, just just kind of kept going Make like sure. this to separate the different strands. And with it, then, as I was doing this, I was able to position the, the different uh, thread as I wanted it to be, as, as I wanted the feather to look. Especially if the color sequence that you're doing matters. Exactly. In this case, like, like our friend said, it's a variegated yarn so it, or a thread. It doesn't matter. Uh, which color comes when. But you might be doing something a little bit more intricate. That will matter. What you do not want is the thread overlapping the other. If it overlaps, it'll look bulky and weird. Yeah. So you'll see. Uh, but with this, with the skewer, you can separate it and arrange the feather however you want it to be. By the way, Bree just joined us. Welcome, Bree. Hey, Bree. She said, I'm late. So, Bree, you didn't miss much. We we just started a little bit ago. We're basically, we have the thread and the paver pole, the transparent paver pole, and we're making very cool jewelry with it. And, of course, we have the offer of the day because, you know, Yes, we do. But, yes, in fact, you know, this is a great segue, <laughs> Shahar. Um, right now, go to mondomarkettv.com and you can get your bottle of transparent paver pole. Uh, these are handy-dandy bottles because you open them up and it's just like squeeze and, and, and play with it that that way. Uh, perfect amount for jewelry. You can make tons of necklaces with this bottle. And during the next 24 hours, we have, hours, we have a special price for you. So normally you can get it for uh, $17.99. During the next 24 hours, you can get it for $16.57. So go there right now. Take advantage of this promo and create beautiful feathers uh, with your transparent paverpaw, okay? And you see here. And Brie, I want to know what your favorite bird is. Oh, yeah. Uh, you see here, I have this much paper pole. is a lot for our project. I could easily work about 10 feathers, small feathers with this, at least. It wouldn't be enough for this guy here. Why? Because since it's yarn, it's going to soak a lot more. So it did use a lot more product. But I will probably go a full side with this amount that I have here. So it doesn't use much at all. Okay. So we have a question from Sandy. Sure. Why should you not put a knot like a surgeon's knot, which is not really a flat knot? You can put a knot, whatever actually knot you want to, because remember one thing, you can make the feather as sophisticated as you want. Uh, if you remember the time of macrame, the knots are all the, the, the thing, right? So you could create all that spine. I don't know how that is called in a feather. But you, you could work all that spine with beautiful knots. That could look and amazing, yes, actually. Yes, especially on a piece to, to wear mm -hmm. or something like on a wreath. It would call a lot of attention. It would be gorgeous. Uh, when I did, and I, I think I made two with, you know, doing once and doing twice, I didn't like the bulk because it was just bulk and not any design. Now, if you can make a knot 
that you know adds to the piece, go for it. You can. It's not going to impact the. It's not wrong. The main right? thing it's, is make a knot that adds to the piece to the design of the piece, and that and gives you strands on both sides. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. That's it. Okay. So I have my piece here, and always find it dandy. We combed everything. Now Ooh, we are going to mess. Yes. So. Now is the time that is good for you to look in a, in a reference of a feather because, again, they do have different shapes, different cuts. Uh, I like that, especially here at the bottom, they kind of go together. So what I do, I start with my fingers, but I go to the mat again very fast, but I start giving a shape. So if I'm trying with this color, I could do something more like the 70s. I could play with a wider and, and gaps. If I don't, I want it to go more like a traditional feather, I'm going to bring them together. So we separated and put them together again because we don't want overlapping too much. And Shahar, is it, a, is it possible for you to do it without the saran wrap? I, I, I go back on that. It does shine quite a bit. It is shining? Yes. Okay. But in your home, work on the saran wrap. And you are going to keep this until the end, okay? Yeah, I see. I, I can see that it's, it's... It's better that way. By the way, yeah. Bree said that her favorite bird is the bluebird. Oh, I is have it, so cool, kind of, many cool uh, pictures. The mountain bluebird? I love mountain bluebirds. Um, Ka Ka uh, Karen said hi. She's uh, from Polson. Polson is in Arizona, right? Washington? Washington. Okay, so now I have the, the shape that I want oh, for my feather. It's not the final one. Remember that the final one, I can play with the wire. Right now the wire is straight. And you may even put a little bit more, and now you're putting a little more, a bit more to keep this shape, okay? Sandy suggested you can also add beads to the spine. Oh, yes. Yes, you can make it really so pretty. Good. Yes. So good. Okay, so see, I have the shape that I want. Now, there is one thing I need to do before I leave this to dry. And here's the moment that I do like to come with my fingers and make sure that I have product on almost everything here. Almost because if there is one spot or another without it, no big deal in this case, right? And now I decide the shape. So, for example, this piece right now, it reminds me of the 70s. So I could just cut with a rounded uh, top here and bottom, or I could go like I did with my big one and make more of a traditional. So obviously right now. It's ugly. It's ugly because the product needs to dry yeah. and there's a couple more things that we need to do, uh -huh. but you get the idea. Okay, so what you have to do now is actually to cut. Mm. You're not going to wait until it's dry to cut. So write that down because when it, it, when it hardens, it hardens. So it's going to be tough. It's not impossible to cut, but it's going to be tough. Okay, I did that myself, <laughs> telling you. So you have to cut now. Use a, uh, one that is not too important to you anyway. So what I do is I leave this as long as possible and I cut the side. And now I can decide, do I, am I going to use this as a pendant, as a earring, or as a, a card, a wreath, what, what? Because I can control the final as size as well. It could be an ornament. Oh yeah, totally. So I'm going to cut a little bit at the bottom and then I cut more here and I try to do the same thing. So you're basically rounding. What are you doing? Uh, Tell us. I'm going, I, I want the top to be shorter than the bottom. That's what I'm going for. And again, if you have a reference, they have different shapes. Okay. So for now I see I can, I need to cut a little bit more here. Karen wants to know if the Paverpal comes off the mat easily. With the silicone mat, yes. Yes. Because it's a type of plastic. Plastic. It doesn't adhere to plastic, so any plastic surface you're fine, but other than that... Mm. You know, I know silicone mats are, are something that quilters have a lot, but I have a ton of them, not only here in the studio, but at home as well. Uh, they sustain a lot. I know one thing they don't sustain well, uh, is uh, acetone. You mess up all the, the oh, grids. Really? I did that. The yes. And if you're working with heat, 
like yesterday, Noemi was uh, working with a heat gun. Uh, what it's going to do is, it's going, wherever the heat is strong, it's going to bulk and it doesn't go back to normal, Ooh. unless it's a heat resistant mat. So this specific one is, this one can get up to 400, I believe. Uh, the one we use on the Cures Monde Studio, you can't that, take that long, it's a quilter's one. So, and there are some that are for glass artists that can take even more. But you should work on one. It saves a lot of tables. So Jenny said you could make tiny ones and make stitch markers. Oh, yes. Uh, you could make you could make you could earrings. Also, uh, that's what I was going to say with the tiny ones, earrings. Yeah. So this or is bracelets, our... Bracelets, little charms. Yeah. So I mean, things. really, if you, if you really go to Pinterest and you, and you, you type something like uh, crafts with feathers, there's so many ideas. Uh, one that I saw, I, I have short hair, so it doesn't apply to me, but one that I saw is making several of these flowers and putting them together, either with a ribbon or, or even metal, and using in the back of your hair when you have long hair. Mm. If you have the right colors, because it can look very hippie. Uh -huh. But if you have the right colors, it actually looks gorgeous, mm. right? And why not? Uh, so this is the final piece. Okay, let's see of it over course, here. Of course it is wet, so it does not look good. That's why I brought the others that have dried already. So what you're going to do on top of your saran wrap is leave this. If you leave this for about uh, six hours, it's going to be totally transparent. So you just and then the you, saran wrap yeah, and, and then you turn around a little bit, leave another two hours. So the the cool thing is you should be this making several great. of these at the same. It's going to look beautiful. Yes. And of course, after six hours, uh, it it dried, but I still can cut. So if I want to make some simple cuts here and make it a little bit different, I still can. If I let it more than a day and I try to cut, it just gets tough. This is Ooh. not the best. See, I can, but, but it requires, yes, yeah, because I can adjust, still can adjust this, see? So it's more challenge. And then once it's dry, then you decide the shape that you want for your, for your feather. You see, you really have a lot of flexibility here. If you're going to show this wire, you might want to cover like you did, even with another color if you want, but cover, don't leave the wire showing. And basically that's it. Now I want to know what do you think is a simple type of thing, but can be it's used fun. in a bunch and of stuff. And there's so much potential. There's so many things that you can do. Yeah, and you- And it's different. It is different. And you're using leftovers, right? Instead yeah, of true. just leaving them there for years. That's awesome, that's right? true. Yeah. And I mean, if you're a spinner, like Jenny, uh, if you have very cool yarn that you can, Ooh, that you, yes, yes you can crochet and make things like that, but you can create cool jewelry with it as well mm -hmm. and wear it. Yeah. 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 It, the sky's the limit always. You just need to be thinking. Every time you have an idea, you do not need to run to the craft store to buy new stuff. You have at home many things. And yes, you can use natural feathers uh, and you can buy those at the, at the store. Uh, but sometimes these are going to look way better than, they, than the natural one, believe it or not, because they usually come dyed in, in very strong colors. And common too. Very common. Yeah. So Sydney said, love it, right? I'm still uh, doing the other. A question from Bree. If we use Josephine wax on it, could we use it on an outdoor mobile? Uh, uh, Josephine varnish, yes. Yes. Yes, you can. Remember, ah. it's the same rule. Now, now, there is one thing you have to take into consideration. Very good question, actually, Brie, because that, that reminded me of something. It's not going to make noise. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but everything that I use here is acrylic. Remember that to be weather resistant, it has to be a natural fiber. So in the case of Jenny, that she spins from her alpacas and, 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 and all kinds of natural fiber, uh, then she can, right? Because it's a natural type of fiber. Once she put the transparent fiber pole and the varnish, she can put anywhere and stay there forever. Uh, with these, for example, none of mine could really stay in the garden for too long. Because they're not natural fiber and they are not we didn't natural. put the Joseph Josephine well, wax on them. I'm going to risk saying that the crochet thread is cotton. 
Okay. So that would do. But I'm going to risk because I don't have the label here to say. All right. So then it would be fine. It needs to be natural fiber to withstand the weather. Sandy said this has great potential. Oh, yes. I know. It totally does. It's, uh, see, I, I was debating myself because I thought, oh, it's so simple. I don't know but if they're going to, to think it's interesting. Sometimes it's the simple simplest <laughs> ideas. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Jenny said uh, fun luggage tags and purse pulls with these. Yes. yes. Well, yeah, with the mixed media bags. Ooh, great oh, great idea. Oh, yes, but also luggage bags, like if you want to, your luggage to stand out at the airport. That too, but I like the mixed media bags in my head right yeah, now. Yeah, Jenny. Uh, I was thinking, no, you know, we were talking about this today. So I usually wear bags that I made, but for some reason, uh, the ones I was wearing didn't have the space I wanted. I went and I bought a, a nice one. But nice it's just one. so weird to I don't see like her in the purse that, that she didn't make. So today, we left for lunch, and she mentioned something about the bag. I saw her walking with the purse, and oh. it's like, wait, that doesn't look it like. It doesn't look like doesn't you. Look like my mom. So I said, <laughs> I need to make my bag. I've been, I've been delaying the process, and yes, a feather will go in that bag. That's for sure. Bree so, said, I love it. Great idea. Thank you. By the way, by the way, ladies, and by the way, friends, I don't want to to exclude any guys watching. Um, go to mondomarkettv.com right now and you can get your transparent power pole uh, on sale during the next 24 hours. It's a great deal, so go there to get it. Uh, also, you will see there, if you'd like the paint, you saw the metallic paint, uh, this right here, we have it in gold and silver and you can get it at mondomarkettv. Just go there, .com, get your supply of power pole and your uh, oil-based paint and create some beautiful, just beautiful feathers uh, with uh, even with scrap yarn that you might have or with beautiful embroidery flaws. The potential, there's so much. You can make jewelry, you can make mobiles, you can create uh, luggage tags, like so many things. Yeah. So many. And, and like you said, I totally forgot. But it, it's super fun. That's what I can, I can tell you. You're going to make a ton of these. They are fast, especially when you're working at home. Uh, it's easy and fast for you to make, so you can make several. Uh, even, you know, the, the stuffers for the end of the year, you can make pendants for everybody. So, for Key example, chains. Jan suggests, she said, I can see making leaf shapes and then applying the microfleur dried flowers to create a picture. Oh my like gosh. on a picture frame? Like making a very big one. That and would then be so putting, pretty. That would be, wow. By so way, you make that, girl. Send the, Send us a picture. A picture. And if you allow us, we'll put on the page where we have the product because that's a super awesome idea. And uh, by the way, thank you for the segue opportunity, Jen. <laughs> hey, guys, if you haven't heard yet, we have a cool drawing going on at Mondo Market TV. So a very lucky person is going to get this Micro Fleur Microwave Flower Press. You've seen us use it, demo it in a different episode. There's there's so much potential there as well. And now is the perfect time for you to use these because you can take flowers, beautiful flowers, and dry them in seconds. It really takes 30 seconds, less than a minute to do this. You have beautiful, bold flowers, uh, dried flowers that you can use in pretty much any of your arts and uh, craft Don't endeavors. Drying the herbs for tea and cooking later. That right. too. So how do you how do you enter the drawing? You might ask me. Go to Mondo Market TV on Facebook. You will see the post. I believe it's pinned at the top. You will see the post where we talk about the Microfleur giveaway and do what it tells you to do. Basically, very simple. You just have to like, comment, and share that post. We'll announce the lucky winner on the fifteenth of July. So. Do that. It's a great tool. It's really one of my favorite things that we've demoed here. Yes. It's so cool. It is. It is. You see, just while we were chatting and you were inviting them to, to get the power pole and run for the giveaway, I basically finished another one. I'm putting the product on the second side. See? So it, it's so... And Easy fast. and fast, yes. I like it when it's fast, Shahar. Me too, I like fast. Uh, Bree suggests putting them on a uh, wreath. Yes, Bree. Yes. Shahar even talked about this one, the bigger one, because then you can totally turn it. Uh, you use it, use this one for a wreath, for example. You can yes. see here. Um, I'll show you both sides. She she kind of demo, was demoing with it and showing what you can do with the leaf. I, I, I remember what I was going to say. If you like painting and you play with markers, uh, this is fantastic because you can really work with a one color one and then create designs here, very intricate designs. So think about oh, this one I, I made in a very different shape. Let's see. It's wet. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is more of a V shape. Yes. 
Hang on. Let's Still, see. you have feathers that look like that. Yes. The peacock in itself doesn't look like a, the normal feather, right? Now, it has a different Now, obviously, you don't shape. get the full effect because the product is still yeah, wet, but what? it dries transparent. Ha-ha, <laughs> transparent. <laughs> Very yeah. cool. See? So this would be a beautiful pendant. And again, you can add, it needs more. I, I can see it needs more here. So I'm going to add a, a little bit more. And there you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Very cool. Simple, fast, but beautiful. Exactly. If you make things, show us. We like to see. And you see, new ideas come from each one of you. And we, we really love to, to take a look at. Because every week, we, I've been thinking a lot, what can I repurpose now that would make sense and make something beautiful so I don't have this pile of stuff in my studio and I can turn them into gifts. Uh, decoration for my home, and even, you know, like I can use uh, tiny feathers even in a sculpture, right? So think about that. How can I repurpose things that are there because someday I will use that, but they just keep accumulating. I don't know if you believe in energy or not. I do believe that everything is energy. And I think that we, every time we think that, and we do that, right? Every time we think, okay, things are kind of weird. <laughs> I go and clean stuff in the sense of organizing the sock drawer or clothes or, or the studio and take things out because energy needs to flow, right? Energy needs to flow. And if we are hoarding stuff all the time, we, we don't have, it comes a point, it, you don't have space for stuff, for, for the energy to flow. You have no, no space for stuff either because all it's taken. Uh, so think about that because sometimes that's a good exercise. You, you're not going to, of course, clean your studio making feathers, but you, you get into the habit of how can I use this today and turn it into something cool. That's right. right. How can I turn this into something cool? Mm -hmm. And that's why I love the, uh, the, your show, this show, the Sparkle of Creativity show, because you always show us how to turn something into something yeah. cool. Yeah. No, no commitment to, to art in itself. It's more of, well, let's have fun let's and make creative. stuff. Let's get creative. Yeah, right? exactly. And, make, and whenever you have the opportunity with friends, with groups, uh, and they are questioning, how can we pull this party? How can we do this? You know, easily you can create decorations and fun and giveaways and stuff without even spending money. Exactly. Super cool. Cool. Awesome. Any final announcements that you'd like uh, or thoughts? that you'd like to share with our friends today? No. No? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, we are good. We are, we are really good. Uh, it was simple, like I said. So now you know how to make- I thought it was make... great, Shahar. Stop focusing on the fact that it was simple. The fact that it no, was simple, simple was cool. No, simple to make and simple and easy. Exactly, and fast. And fast. But beautiful enough that you can create Super amazing cool. pieces out of that. And yes. once again, uh, the puffer pole coming into place because it is a great product. And you know, when you see the quality of the pieces and how they last, it makes a big difference. That's right. Makes a huge difference. Yeah. All right, so next week, do we have? Uh... Next week we do have. All right, so, so just so you know, I'm sure you know already anyway, go to the Modern Market TV page uh, to, do the, to do the drawing, okay, for the microfleur. But don't forget that every week we have, on Wednesdays, we have the Crafting with Shalin uh, on right here, mondomarkettv.com, and it's at 3 p.m. Mountain, that's 5 p.m. Eastern. So every week, of Wednesdays with Crafting with Shalin, and then every Thursday, every week Thursdays, uh, your sparkle of creativity with Shahar, right here in Mondo Market TV, 3 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Eastern again. Um, so do that, join us next week, and don't forget to go to mondomarkettv.com right now to get your bottle of the transparent power pole and your oil paint so you can create beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pieces. You saw the potential that this has. All you need to do is go to mondomarkettv.com to get your supply of power pole right now. Take advantage of the sale that we have going on. Special pricing during the next 24 hours, so do that, okay? Cool. Thank you so much All for right. being here and interacting with us. That's right. See you next time. See ya.